All right, good morning. We're here for the M&A Funding Accelerator International Markets track today. Uh, good of those of you who got up early today after the uh, parties last night. Uh, my name is Mike Chang. I'm an MC. Uh, I work at uh, Maven Partners, formerly was uh, Senior Director of Corporate Development Electronic Arts. Today, this panel or this uh, session is Incubators and Accelerators, an inside look at startup funding and entrepreneurship programs. Uh, we're honored to have Jason De La Roca, the co-founder of Execution Labs. Uh, Execution Labs is a first-of-a-kind hybrid game ex incubator and go-to-market accelerator that helps independent game developers produce games and bring them to the market. Jason's based up in Canada, and among other things, he was a former executive director for the IGDA. I'm going to turn it over to Jason. Right. Thank you very much, Mark. All right, well, thanks, everyone, for uh, making here. I'm not sure if it's the, the time of day or the location of the room that's kind of people are wandering the hallways trying to... It's the location of the room. All right, well, I feel better then. Um, all right, well, since it's such a small audience, I mean, admittedly, I, I kind of prepared the, um, the presentation geared more towards uh, developers who are possibly contemplating, uh, you know, applying to a program or, or looking into various programs, but a quick scan of the room shows more suits than developers. Uh, so, I mean, can I get a sense of the type of people that are, who, who are actual developers? Oh, developers wearing suits. Okay. Uh, I'm like totally confused now. Uh, and sort of maybe more investory, money bankery type folks, a couple, very shyly, they don't want to reveal themselves. Um, and is that the whole room or is there some folks that don't, we didn't sort of account for? All right, well, so actually it seems like there are more developers. Well, anyway, so we'll, we'll, we'll just dive in and, and during the Q&A part we can kind of direct things uh, accordingly. Um, so as Mike said, uh, I'm co-founder of Execution Labs. We're an incubator accelerator up in, in Montreal in Canada. Uh, with a base uh, here in uh, San Francisco as well. But I'll get into that in a, in a bit more detail later. So these are my super awesome hand-drawn uh, diagrams where the first thing I want to do is talk a bit about uh, defining what incubators and accelerators are. Uh, I find often there's confusion, not that this diagram is going to resolve any of that confusion, but um, a confusion about what, what they are and, and, and how to define them. So generally, we, we, we define three kind of different types of structures. Uh, the I in the first box represents incubator. The A in the middle box would be accelerator. Uh, and then the co in the third box would be a co-location, co-share, sort of co-working space. And I'll, I'll describe each one of those uh, in a little bit of detail. Um, so in the incubator chunk, or sort of a focused incubator, generally you have talent uh, or teams coming into that incubator. Uh, they provide a certain amount of resources. And generally speaking, the goal of that box is to produce from nothing or from very little a product or an MVP or a prototype, right? You're coming in with talent and perhaps a concept, uh, and then you're, you're generating uh, something, like you're generating a, a product. That's really different than an accelerator, which generally implies that you already have that product, either at a kind of near go-to-market stage uh, or actually it has been released to market. And now what you're really looking for in that accelerator phase uh, which, you know, Y Combinator being sort of the, the key example of that, uh, is you're looking for market traction or, or market acceleration. You're looking to boost, uh, you know, users, revenue, you know, buzz, et cetera, uh, in, in the accelerator. Um, so it's really sort of distinct that in the incubator you're making the product and then in the accelerator you're selling the product or you're, or you're accelerating the sales or traction of that product. Um, and then the co-share working space, generally I kind of put a dashed line because sometimes they get kind of confused or mingled in with uh, incubators and accelerators. Um, generally, uh, I mean, it's a, I put the question mark because there isn't sort of a, a set sort of entry or exit point. It's, it's a different situation where you're generally sort of paying to be there to get a seat as part of a larger sort of, sort of working space. Um, and then depending, I put the red hour, arrows because sometimes you can sort of do an, excel, uh, an incubator program to create your product. Uh, and then, you know, maybe apply to an accelerator program with the product to then get market acceleration. Um, at Execution Labs, for example, we combine the, the I and the A together. So we have game, t game development talent coming in. Uh, we give them resources to create the prototype or MVP. And then within the same program, we help assist them go to market and accelerate their, uh, their traction in the marketplace. Uh, and we, we, in our case, don't have the co sort of co-located uh, working space. Although the teams do work together, there's no, you can't just walk up and say, I want to buy a desk or buy, a, buy an office. Um, so that's my super quick kind of definition of, uh, uh, of incubators and accelerators, and then the kind of the, the hanger on there, the co-share space. All right, my other awesome hand-drawn 
uh, diagram. Um, what's important to understand when you're, when you're going into one of these programs or applying for the programs is really the deal that's being offered. Um, and the top circles represent what you're getting and then the bottom is, is what you have to give up and I'll explain as we go. So um, the first sort of circle is R for resources. So generally you're applying to one of these programs to obtain resources, most notably funding, sort of seed or pre-seed funding, small amounts of money or, well, depending which program you apply to. Uh, but depending on the program, also development resources in, in the form of, uh, you know, computers and, and a free desk and working space uh, and, uh, you know, marketing dollars, uh, et cetera, et cetera, the, you know, resources stuff that you're uh, provided, uh, you know, to be in the program. Uh, M is the, the mentorship or the coaching. So most uh, incubators and accelerators provide some degree of coaching or curriculum where you come in and either on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, they have the experts coming in or investors coming in uh, to coach the teams, to, to look at your product, to give uh, input and, and advice. Uh, and, you know, that's, a, that's sort of a major element of most of these uh, programs. Uh, and then the A represents access. So oftentimes the people who are running these programs are, are well connected or have some history in the particular industry that they're represented and they can call in favors, they can open doors, they have press contacts, they have a friend at Google or Apple which can kind of accelerate uh, your you know, process through, through those platforms. Again, really depends on what sort of market or, or what uh, pro type of program you're in. But generally speaking, these are the things that you would look to when you are applying to or thinking of going to one of these programs is you know, what are the resources provided? What kind of mentorship and coaching is, is provided? Uh, and then what kind of access does this give me that, you know, if I just do this in my garage with my buddies, you know, I can't really have that kind of, of access. Um, so those are sort of the three main chunks uh, of, of what you get. Uh, what you give up is a com a sort of a combination of uh, usually equity. Uh, so you give up a, a small percent of equity in your startup, in your company. Uh, in exchange for those uh, resources. Um, and in some cases, although rarely, uh, revenue share. Uh, so for example, Execution Labs, uh, it is a combination of those two things. We do take a revenue share on the project that's created during the program. Um, and then we also take a small equity stake within the startups that, that we fund and support. Um, and we do that in part because we're only game focused. So we can sort of design the model in that way where it makes sense to take revenue share off a game project. Whereas more traditional, you know, general tech accelerators, you know, don't take a rev share because it might not make sense if you're doing an e-commerce site or a biotech startup or, you know, green energy, like it's so disparate, the, the sectors and, and products that it doesn't always make sense to do that. Uh, and then in some other cases, uh, you maybe you pay fees. I mean, there are programs out there that, you know, you give them money instead of take funding. So it's, let's say, an incubator where you get some coaching and some development resources, but you're paying, as, a, as the startup, you're actually paying a fee to have a seat, you know, in the building, um, you know, which is sort of a different, uh, a different approach. Um, so that's really the kind of the deal uh, that's being made, like, you know, what you're getting in terms of uh, resources, mentoring, and, and access in exchange for what you have to give up, which is generally some combination of equity in your company, revenue on your, on your project and uh, potentially, you know, fees to, to, to be there. All right, um, Execution Labs, we're currently uh, supporting six teams. So these are the logos of the, of the teams. Uh, four of them are here in the Indie Showcase. Uh, and so in fact, that's one of the things that we do uh, uh, in our program is we bring our teams to GDC, to, you know, to Casual Connect, to other conferences where they have an opportunity not only to build buzz and show off their game, but to build connections with the press, you know, with other potential partners and just, you know, learn from, from the community uh, at large. Um, these are some, some screen images from the games that they're working on. Uh, uh, we have six teams in the program. We only brought four because two of them are, are relatively new in the past month, so they really didn't have something to showcase in, 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 the, in the showcase, so we didn't uh, bring them down. Um, at, at Execution Labs, we do have a lot of uh, mentorship, so uh, you know we're lucky that we have a lot of friends in the industry. This is, uh, for those who know him, uh, Eric Zimmerman, uh, world-renowned game designer who came and spent a, a full day with the teams, uh, really digging in on their paper prototypes. This was earlier in the, in the process. Um, so we actually kind of time who we bring in when, depending on the pain points of the teams or what we think is most relevant for them to be working on, you know, depending on what time frame in, in the program uh, they're in. Uh, you know, we host uh, events, so this is uh, Julie 
from Ouya who came in uh, to Montreal and we hosted a, an event uh, there for not only us but for the community at large. And so actually one of the roles that we play and I think more broadly incubators and accelerators really being sort of a nexus point within the startup ecosystem or entrepreneurship ecosystem. So we really try to play an important role uh, and our doors are open and oftentimes when we have mentors or guests in town we kind of we host uh, open events so that all the developers uh, in the city can uh, can benefit from that. Um, so that's a, just sort of an open approach. We host events, showcase events. Um, this is uh, one of our teams in, uh, in actually a conference in Ottawa. We were part of the showcase there. Uh, and also we, you know, we help them get a lot of uh, press so they run one of the TV shows and such. Um, and then we actually just, I think two weeks ago, hosted our first uh, demo day. Uh, there was a big startup festival in uh, Montreal, International Startup Festival. Uh, and we hosted a demo day with about 250 uh, press, investors, game industry execs, partners, uh, et cetera, uh, where the, game, the, the studios kind of did their sort of you know, standard uh, startup uh, pitch. So that was, uh, that was a nice, uh, nice milestone. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of other examples uh, out there. Um, there are not that many that are game focused. So there's us, Execution Labs, uh, Game Founders in Estonia uh, has, has ran a few, a few cohorts. Uh, right Pedal is um, uh, more of a de dedicated accelerator, so a fixed time frame accelerator uh, in Australia. Uh, then you have some that are more kind of regional based, uh, like Dutch Game Garden or the one in the middle of the Game Incubator Network is based in Sweden, where um, you know, they're really sort of either attached to a school or, or largely government funded uh, in, in, in a role to really support uh, the development of the ecosystem in that particular country. Uh, Bento Mizo, uh, the Bento Box is an example of a, a game focused uh, uh, co located or shared workspace in Toronto uh, where you pay a fee to be there, but there is kind of a communal spirit. They do bring in speakers. So there is kind of a curriculum, but they're not providing uh, funding, but they do a really, you know, they do a really good job. Uh, you have the more traditional ones like Y Combinator Tech Stars, you know, which are great programs, but generally don't tend to take uh, game specific uh, applicants. I mean, they've done a couple, uh, but generally don't really touch it. Or Grow Lab in Vancouver, uh, which also is a more traditional uh, program. And, and I didn't put up the logo, but there's one in Montreal called Founder Fuel um, uh, that also doesn't really touch uh, games. But if you're doing more of a platform or middleware, uh, you know, game-related service, uh, then you, you probably have a chance getting into uh, Y Combinator, Techstars, or, or, uh, or Grow Lab. Um, and there, there are a few others around the world, but um, the, you know, the ones that at least sort of touch on games to any great extent, the, there aren't that many of them. Uh, although we do hear sort of rumors, oh, that was the worst time for you to take a picture. <laughs> so I'm like, eee. It's like, I did it. Uh, anyways. Um, but we do, we do actually get a lot of uh, inquiries from around the world from people who want to st start game-related uh, uh, incubators or accelerator programs. And actually, we're super open and transparent about our model. You can go to our website, uh, and all the details are up there in terms of uh, you know, the, the funding we provide and the duration of the program and, and the deal and, and so on and so on. Um, just in terms of quick, uh, quick tips, uh, I mean, you, you have to think about the, the balance of the deal, right? You know, what, what is it that you're looking for? Uh, what, is, you know, what are the gaps uh, in, in, in what you're doing as a company, and does that program sort of fill those gaps? So for example, uh, with Execution Labs, several of the teams, I mean, it was primarily the, the funding piece, right, the resources piece, right, where they were, they were you know, short on funding, and they're short on resources, and they were bootstrapping, and so they really came to us, I mean, as kind of the primary objective. Whereas other, you know, other teams, you know, they had saved up money, they, they really didn't need the funding to a huge extent, but they were mainly interested in the mentorship and the access. So the funding was a nice to have, the resources was a nice to have, but that really wasn't what attracted them. They wanted access to our sort of network and, and so on. So, so as a developer, you really need to think about, you know, what is it that I'm, I'm looking for? Uh, and, and, in, and in certain cases, the R part, the resources part, is in fact the least significant, right? The money isn't huge amounts of money. Um, and, and in terms of success of your startup and success of your project, often it's the, the mentoring and the access that actually will have a much greater impact than just you know, a couple of dollars up front. So as a tip, you really need to understand what the deal is being offered, what you have to give up in return, uh, and is that the right balance, and also is that sort of the gap uh, you, know, you, you need uh, as a startup. Um, the other one is to kind of, uh, I put it up there, is sort of embrace the, the venture influence. 
uh, in that most of these programs do take a, you know, a kind of a venture-oriented approach to things, uh, either because they are, they are venture-funded, like, I mean, we're venture-funded, um, or, or, you know, there's, there's kind of a, a commercial motivation. So it's very clear that when teams come in, it's not just kind of a, you know, a hobby club and people are going to kick back and sort of noodle on their, you know, indie ideas and artsy ideas. They're there to build a company. They're there to build a project that's commercially viable. Of course, we're all gamers, you know, we've been in the game industry a long time, we want it to be innovative, we want it to be artful, we want it to be fun, uh, but there is a, a heavy commercial motivation and, and that, for some developers, that just doesn't match. Right? They just want to go in the garage and sort of noodle on their you know, crazy indie concept, they don't want that commercial uh, pressure. Um, so we do sort of try to balance as much as possible the, you know, be creative and innovative, but also create something that's actually going to be, uh, you know, commercially viable. Um, so that's sort of a, tw a tip if you're thinking of applying to one of these or looking at these. Um, and then do, do your research. Super important to do the research. Uh, research uh, not only in terms of the deal being offered and understanding that, uh, but looking at the founders uh, and the managers of the program because these are people that are kind of going to, you know, they're the ones that are going to be fighting for you and serving as your, your champions in many ways. So what have they done? What's their history? What's their pedigree? Uh, the mentor and partner networks. Uh, so nor normally, you know, these programs do list out their, their mentors and partners. Uh, and, so, and so looking at who those mentors are, because these are the ones that are going to be coming in to advise you and, and give you feedback and so on. Uh, also, their investors. Uh, you know, who are the investors? Because oftentimes the investors in the program are the most likely investors into you as, the, as a startup graduating from the program. I mean, that's not always the case, but that's, you know, general truism. So, you know, who are the investors? Are they reputable? Are they, you know, respected in the community, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, and then when possible, uh, you know, the current teams, and the projects that are being worked on, and then also the graduates. You know, so what have the graduates done? What, you know, where have those teams gone? How have the projects uh, succeeded or not, uh, et cetera? Now, admittedly, a lot of these programs are, are relatively new. So for example, with Execution Labs, we haven't graduated anyone yet because the first teams came in uh, in January. Uh, so we're just sort of in the process of launching the first set of products uh, now. Um, and some of the other programs are quite new. But um, anyway, so I mean, you, at least you want to look at who, who, who did they accept because if you're looking to apply, then looking at who the program has already accepted in the program gives you kind of a sense of, you know, the, the types of projects that the program uh, is looking for. Um, so those are, those are my quick, uh, quick tips. Um, again, you can go to our website uh, if you want more details on our program in particular. I mean, I tried to be relatively broad here. Uh, and uh, you can email me uh, you know, or Twitter me, whatever. I mean, we're, again, we're very open and we, we're very sharing and, uh, you know, happy to see you know, good stuff going on in the, in the startup ecosystem for, for games. Thank you. So, uh, I think we have a few minutes. Uh, if you have any particular or specific questions, uh, whether it's about stuff in general or our program in particular, I I'm happy to answer questions and uh, wait for the microphone to come to you because they, they're recording the, the, the audio. Yes, sir. Is it true that most incubators, or at least many of them, are looking to bring in companies that are looking to eventually sell their company. And that's where they get a lot of their funding from as well. Yeah, I mean, so the question of, of kind of what's the exit strategy uh, is definitely there. I mean, uh, I can't answer that for other programs. Uh, certainly for some of them, that, that would be a pressure. They're looking to kind of flip the, the graduates because that's where they get their big uh, payday. Uh, we structured the progr our program such that, uh, you know, we have that balance between revenue share on the project, which comes immediately, so there isn't the same pressure on, on flipping the company and getting an exit right away. If it happens down the road, well, then we have our, our equity stake, and so we benefit in the, the proceeds of, of that sort of uh, major event. Uh, but I wouldn't say, uh, for us anyway, that's not a major uh, pressure point. I mean, our focus is to get the g games out the door, help them succeed, build market traction, and build a viable startup. And so the focus really is on the startup. I think because we're games focused, it allows us to be uh, well, more focused in that sense where it's really about the game and building a studio and enabling the team to survive and build their next game and kind of grow from there. Whereas if, you know, Y Combinator, it's much more disparate and so it's more on the, the flipping, I, I think. But again, I, I can't speak for the other programs, but that's actually something you should sort of investigate you know, inter on the programs that you're looking to apply because then that, that pressure will be on you or, or not. So, yeah, good question. All right. Anything else? Sir? So in the incubator program, how far along are the games or the development uh, when you accept them? 
Right, so, so uh, for us, it's slightly varying. Uh, we've taken in teams that had no, no concept yet, uh, and we were just in love with the team, and they were so strong that we're like, okay, we have faith in you guys, and we know you'll just come up with something. And, and they iterated and, and came up with something relatively quick, like within the first sort of week or two. Uh, whereas others you know, already had maybe a, a very rough prototype or, or, or at least some concept about what they want to do, kind of maybe a, a rough design dog. Um, and so it's kind of a balance that, you know, the more uh, awesome, for lack of a better term, the team is, the less you have to worry about, like, is it ninjas, is it robots, is it opponent? Like, it's like, oh, I just, like, it's all about the team. Whereas the team, let's say, is slightly junior or, or less experienced and you're unsure but you like them, you know, then they need to sort of produce more validation that, of what they've done and here's a prototype to kind of show that they can, can execute. Now, uh, I mean, that's for us, we have that sort of variability. Um, you know, other programs might require that you actually have, you know, an MVP on the App Store and you're coming in to get just sort of market acceleration. And so at that point, if you're like, well, I've got this idea for ninjas, like, it's not, like that's not enough. You have to have something. So uh, usually the programs on their websites would be quite clear in terms of if you want to apply, you know, here's the criteria to apply. Uh, but in our case, we're really focused on the team, the team's history, their cohesion, the talent level, skills, what they've done before. It's really, it's really focused on, on the team. So we don't, not that we don't care, but we don't put that much emphasis or as much emphasis on the state of the, of the project. Yeah. Cool. All right. I think we're done. All right. Thank you very much, folks.